So what's up guys, I'm Colby Cheese, and as you can see, I've got a little presentation here built up for you guys. Now I actually did a talk at a local meetup, and so this is the talk that I did. I went over Vim and Tmux and how to actually use Vim and Tmux like an IDE and make it actually very powerful for, uh, for your editing. So if you're used to using things such as uh, if you're just using things such as Sublime Text or any other editor and you really appreciate the powerful features like being able to navigate code very cleanly and things like that, I'm actually showing you how you can do all of that um, by using Vim combined with Tmux. And that's what this talk is all about. So let me go ahead and jump in and show you. So first off, if you're going to use Vim inside of Tmux, uh, well, normally you would just type in Vim inside of the shell, but uh, what happens is you end up needing to open up another terminal and then alt tab between the two any time you need to do some shell commands. And then you have to open up like multiple shells. Let's say you have one running a server and then another one you need to actually run some commands. So you, you have all these different windows open and it can kind of get unwieldy. And so the idea is that with Tmux, it's actually a like a shell wrapper essentially so you can have vim running within tmux and tmux provides you a lot of really cool stuff so let me kind of show you there um so so tmux is really awesome basically and you can see down in the bottom right i've got a little status bar it gives me the, the the date and the time uh but this is the cool part you can have multiple sessions running within tmux that actually allow you to switch between your various projects. I've always got a ton of projects open. I actually like to have them open at all times because I can use them as reference for other things that I'm doing. And it's just quick to switch between all of them. So you can see I'm just kind of switching sessions here, showing you that. And the cool thing also, or another cool thing, is that you can split up your window. So you can see I, I open up a little horizontal split there. And that's actually a terminal window. And I can use Vim movement commands to move between them. So I'll open up uh, another horizontal one here and then a vertical one to the right of that. And this is how I'll normally have my development environment set up. I'll use like a server running in maybe like the right one. And then I'll have the bottom left one used for uh, shell commands or, or whatever. And then and I can actually open up another window within one project. So you can have multiple windows in a project. Sometimes I'll have notes on one window. Um, there's all kinds of things that you can do. Maybe even you want to have your server running in another window because you don't want to have it down below. But either way, there's a lot of flexibility with it. And this is just scratching the surface, but it's the main thing that I find useful with Tmux used with Vim. So now Vim, if you haven't watched any of my other Vim videos, or you haven't been using it, uh, is really awesome because of some of the movement commands that you can do with it. Now, normally, and I hate this, normally you have to like, if you're in most any other editor, you have to use your mouse and, and like grab stuff and select the text and then, you know, maybe edit something. That's super annoying. And then you gotta, you know, if you wanna edit something somewhere else, you gotta be real precise with your mouse clicking and, and you gotta like move character by character with the arrow keys to, to go where you need to go to edit things. But, when you're using Vim, it's so much quicker. So you can hit like W to, to move word wise. You can move word by word by word. Uh, you can move backwards and forwards very quickly. It uses a system that uh, is a combination of nouns and verbs. So you can actually jump to the beginning of a line, to the end of a line with a hotkey. Uh, there's, a, as you saw right there, there's actually a hotkey that you can set up where you can edit everything within. Uh, brackets or within enclosures of any type. So you can edit everything within quotation marks. You can edit everything within brackets, within uh, parentheses, just by doing a simple set of keystrokes. And this is probably the main selling point for Vim, I found. Uh, I really love it. It makes editing so much more convenient and faster. And that's, that's really the, the idea behind Vim is that it, it just makes your life as a developer much more convenient. So here's me just messing up all of the uh, messing up all of the indentations. I can just hit a little hotkey and it will re-indent things nicely for me in the correct format. So that's great. Uh, you can undo stuff really quickly. There's a massive buffer built into Vim, so you don't have to worry about 
hitting a bunch of weird keys and messing everything up. It's all set up within these buffers that it's got. And so uh, honestly, it's just it's just one of the the best development editors or whatever that I've ever used. You can have open all of these splits. You can see I'm jumping around between the splits. I've got my uh, config set up to actually resize the windows to optimal reading size while I'm within them. And so that's one of the great things. But okay, let's go ahead. And that's pretty much all I'm gonna show you for Vim. It's just the basics of Vim and, and what's great about it. There's obviously a lot more to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into some of the workflow improvements that you can do to make your life a lot better if you're gonna be using Vim and Tmux as an IEE. Uh, the first thing, this is my big tip for you guys. Um, when you're switching between modes in Vim, you have to use the escape key normally to get out of insert mode. But I've actually mapped my caps lock key to be the escape key. And this is great. It's useful for more than just Vim. Like, I mean, who uses the caps lock key that often, really? And it's like on the home row. It's 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 on the, like a perfect location to be used very frequently. So I'd say look up a tutorial for whatever operating system you're using and remap your caps lock key to the escape key. You won't regret it. Trust me. Uh, next up is copy paste. You want to get copy paste set up within Vim. It's actually, you know, Vim was created a long time ago and it doesn't have the best copy paste support. So normally if you're going to copy something from outside of the web, uh, you know, you'll go do a copy command, you'll jump into Vim and you'll try to hit your, um, you know, control V or whatever to, to paste it in. And what ends up happening is it just jacks it all up. It's 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 terrible. As you can see, it's basically it tried to do all the indentation that Vim would normally do. Uh, since I pasted it after a comment, it thought I was like still doing comments. So I don't know. It just jacks everything up. So I'm gonna undo all of this crap here, delete it all, and uh, I've just got a simple little hotkey set up that I can press, and it will just paste anything from the buffer into my uh, Vim, I can hit my little hotkey there to fix the indentations to the way I like it if they have like four spaces and I want it to be two. Real simple, much better as you can see. And that's that's not too hard to set up. And then uh, the same way I can I set it up to where I can actually copy from my Vim and paste it outside of the web as well. So um, now, by the way guys, I'm not going to jump in and show you every little piece of my Vim config. I'll put a link below and it will have my Vim config. So if you need to know how to do all of this stuff that I'm showing you, it's real simple. I've got a commented uh, set of dot files that will show you how all this is set up. But the next one is going to be tab movements. So uh, with tab movements and uh, Vim, this is basically allowing you to uh, move between various splits, I'd say, uh, much easier. I've got a couple of hotkeys and uh, set up that allow me to actually use like control. Uh, well, Vim uses HJKL instead of the arrow keys, but I, I just use like control HJKL to move up, down, left, right between the Vim windows and between Tmux as well. It's very seamless. I don't have to do some crazy weird stuff to, to switch between Vim and Tmux. It feels like it's just one program. I don't have to like click between the windows. It's very fast. I am able to get between the stuff very quickly. So that's definitely something you want to have set up. Another thing you want to turn on is relative numbering. So you may have noticed on my uh, Vim on the left side, you'll see the numbers changing uh, and you can see it counts up and it counts down from the line that I'm on. And then it shows you the line number for the one that I'm on as well. And the great thing about Vim is that you can actually use numbers and then movement commands to move down multiple lines. So if I want to like delete five lines, I can hit D, uh, DJ5 and it's going to delete five down. Or if I just want to move up to line six or something like that, or you know, move up six lines, I can just say six K and boom, I'm where I need to go. So this is amazing. You should definitely have relative numbering on. It makes your life so much easier. There's so many different commands, and, and this really combines with a lot of the other commands that Vim has. So like I have like a comment command, I can do uh, you know, like G C down six or whatever. Anyways, it's it's great. So turn on relative numbering. Um, file management is also important. So I've got a lot of the stuff that I really love about Sublime Text in here. I've got the little file manager on the left. This is called Nerd Tree. It's a plugin. 
it allows you to uh, do the, the standard file view. So if you don't understand the file structure of a project that you're in, you can just open up that nerd tree and it'll show you everything that you've got going on there. You can use some hotkeys. Uh, then I've also got fuzzy file searching. So let's say you already know what you're looking for. I'm looking for the router, for example. I'll just type in control P, start typing in router, and I don't even have to type in the full name of what I'm looking for. It will fuzzy match whatever it is that I, uh, I already know I'm, I'm looking for. So here was a more complicated example. Obviously, I was looking for like something within the views folder, and it found it real simple for me. That's one of the best things that you can have set up is, is quick file management. That's going to make your life so much easier just browsing around things with the combination of nerd tree and control P searching, which is basically, I think, the thing that I like the most when I was using uh, sublime text so all right now so surround.vim is another little plugin that i've got that allows me to do some cool stuff with uh surrounding you know blocks of text and with different things so right here i'm going to select active polls let's say i need to surround that in a div class equals something boom it automatically creates that uh opening and closing div for me there's a uh, so I'm just kind of showing you some small things here. Uh, I can surround it in little p tags. You can surround individual words and in like quotation marks as well, and you can even use it to delete or to change. So you can see I just use uh, I just change the double quotes to single quotes really quickly with just a couple of hotkeys, and it's really simple. I can delete uh tags i can add tags there's a lot of really cool things you can do with surround.vim really great plugin to have definitely a must i think and of course you want to have some kind of comment plugin set up so i've got a simple comment plugin i kind of mentioned it earlier and the cool thing is that for things like uh like html that are kind of difficult to comment out sometimes you can see the little special characters it has to uh escape i have it set up so well this plugin will actually automatically do that commenting out for me and all I got to do is hit GCC and I can do GCC just within stuff you know like GCC inside tag for example or sorry GC inside tag that's my little hotkey and so there's all kinds of different uses for this obviously you can you can use the the, the movement command so right there I just did like uh, GC five down and it commented out five lines I can do GC uh, capital G and that you know comments out to the end of the file from where my cursor is at so there's a lot of really cool stuff there it just makes it fast and simple to comment and uncomment blocks of code and then you've got snippets man okay so this is what I've been waiting for guys I love snippets they are so awesome <laughs> all right so let me show you what uh, I do with I've got all kinds of snippets set up and I, I you can customize this however you like but um, so let's say I'm in a um, in a file here. I can just type T scale tab, and I'll create all of the template stuff that I need for this particular file. And I can type in you know the name of the template. I've got it set up so that it'll type all that stuff in. As you can see, that's a full skeleton. But let's say I already have uh, those two functions at the top, and I just need the hooks. Boom! I'll type T hooks tab, and it creates all the little hooks for me there. These are all little custom ones that I've created since I work with Meteor. I'm always typing this stuff constantly, and this just saves me a lot of time. Now, this is the one I use all the time. F tab and that creates the entire function for me and this is great for JavaScript if you're not a CoffeeScript user like you know CoffeeScript you may think it's great because you save coding time by typing in the little dash and the uh, and the caret symbol but it's actually faster with snippets you can type F tab boom and it goes straight to the little params you can type in your params and uh, hit tab again it goes to the block of code so this is amazing for getting things typed up very very quickly and there's so much more I've gotten snippets. I got snippets for HTML where I can type in like um, div dot tab and it creates a div with class equals and quotations ready to go for me. I've got all kinds of stuff set up and so this is just scratching the surface and there's, I mean, it's the possibilities are just about endless. You can customize it however you'd like. Definitely something to have, uh, highly recommend it. And now this one is kind of a personal preference. You don't really, this is, I, I guess, outside of making your Vim into an IDE, but I'm, I'm big on taking notes and keeping track of things. So I've got this thing I use called Vim Wiki. Uh, oops, I just messed up my uh, slideshow there. Uh, so I've got this thing called Vim Wiki, and I'll just hit a little hotkey. Uh, oops, messed up a <clears throat> button here. Let me 
quit out of that file real quick. Uh, so I will open up Vim. I can hit a little hotkey, and it goes to what I call my Vim wiki. And this ha this is just the index page of my wiki. And you can see all the little purple links. All I have to do is mouse over it and uh, press Enter, and it'll open up that file. And I've got a uh, Vim diary is built into Vim wiki as well. So you can just hit a little hotkey. It'll create a new entry for the current day. Um, as you can see, I've got all kinds of notes inside of here. It automatically does the the um, the lists for you. So I don't have to like spend a lot of time tabbing around and creating the little dots. I just create a new line. I can hit uh, control space and it'll do a little to-do list checkbox for me, which is awesome. And so I'll create to-do lists within here all the time. I've got all kinds of notes. If I want to create a link to a new file, all you have to do is, uh, oh yeah, you can indent right with just a hotkey as well. But yeah, if you want to create like a link to a new file, all you got to do is select the text that you want to create a link to and you hit enter twice and it will jump into a new file automatically. You don't have to like create file names. It's all very quick and simple. So great stuff. Definitely recommend having that. But, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Thank you for watching. This is how you set up them as an ID. Definitely check out the link below if you want to have a link to my Vim config and I will show you guys how I have everything all set up. So I'll see you around for more Vim videos in the future if you want more tips. But uh, peace out guys.